Hey guys, what's going on? Aaron Bennett here. In this video, I'm going to dive into some of the latest stories in the crypto world. Getting started with El Salvador's biggest bank is now accepting Bitcoin payments. So that is huge news. Then take a look at Cardano officially rolling out smart contracts, but it looks like the price of Cardano did not go up. So in my opinion, the price of Cardano was already kind of priced in for this upgrade. Next, take a look at nearly half of this country's residents would welcome the adoption of Bitcoin as an official currency. So as more and more countries do that, it's just going to be very, very bullish for the price of Bitcoin. Then take a look at Kathy Wood with ARK Invest. So one of their funds is looking to invest into Canadian crypto ETFs as opposed to Grayscale Bitcoin Trust for their exposure to Bitcoin. And next, take a look at Avalanche and Polkadot. I'm going to be going over some of my top Polkadot uh, coins in the in the Polkadot ecosystem that if Polkadot surges, which, which I think it will, uh, I think these coins are going to do very, very well. So that's going to be coming up a little later in the video. And I'm going to finish off this video with this very, very important story from this senior contributor to Forbes, Rosalind Layton, talking about the SEC and them giving clarity to the crypto world, but really they're just not doing anything productive. And it's especially coming off what happened recently or what is going on with Coinbase about how, you know, they're just threatening Coinbase and they're not actually helping this industry at all. So I'm going to be covering that very important story. So the first story real quick, El Salvador's biggest bank, well, I'm not going to try to pronounce that name, Banco Agricola. Well, I guess I just did try to pronounce it will now be able to pay down their loans and credit card bills in Bitcoin. Gosh, I wish you can do that in the United States. So the bank's customers will be able to pay US dollar denominated loans and credit card balances with Bitcoin at the exact fair market rate without any additional fees or spreads. And the option is designed to work with any wallet compatible with the Lightning Network, including El Salvador's official wallet, Chivo. So huge fan of the Lightning Network. Uh, I use Strike to pay people. If I need to pay somebody in Bitcoin, I'm going to use Strike if they live in the United States. And it uh, looks like this mic needs to be tightened. Sorry about that. So yeah, no, very exciting. You're seeing countries allow them to pay in Bitcoin to pay off US denominated debt, loans, credit card fees, etc. I think it's amazing what's happening. The next story, Cardano Alonzo upgrade is officially completed. I think we all know this kind of old news, but this is actually, well, it's not old news. It's a day old but the price of Cardano is going down kind of with most of the market right now. I hope Cardano does well. I'm not a Cardano hater at all. I think great projects and competition is good. I still hold some Cardano myself. I haven't completely sold out at all. And uh, I hope it goes up. I hope it goes up. So the next story, a study shows that nearly half of Brazilians want their country to join El Salvador by recognizing Bitcoin as legal tender. That's the news. That's the story. That is big news. Half or nearly half of Brazilians in the study want to be on the Bitcoin standard, want to be able to buy things and use Bitcoin day to day. Huge. The next story, Kathy Wood says they want to use Canadian Bitcoin ETFs to invest in crypto. So this is her fund, ARK Next Generation Internet ETF, which you can see is right here. I'm pulling it up on MarketWatch. And basically what they're saying is they want to replace their investment in Grayscale Bitcoin Trust with a Canadian ETF. And they think it's because GBTC is down 22% year to date, while this Canadian ETF has only dropped 6%. So I like Kathy. I love her funds. I personally invest in a lot of what she invests in. I would just invest directly with her. But like with all ETFs, there is some expense ratio unless you're going to Vanguard and it's like 0.01%, hers is 0.75 to invest with her. Uh, but if I go down and I go to what she is invested in, in this fund, I like it. Uh, Tesla, Twitter, GBTC, Teladoc, Shopify, Square, Coinbase, Zoom. I like it. Some good stuff. I have a lot of those in my personal uh, retirement accounts as well. And next I want to mention uh, Polkadot. I think Polkadot is going to surge. And I've been seeing a lot on Twitter and a lot on YouTube with other YouTubers saying the same thing. So these are some Polkadot ecosystem coins that I think are going to do very, very well. But before I dive into that, you can see Polkadot is up quite a bit today, but they are still down about 25% from their all-time high. So we have Moon River and Polka City, Kylan Network, Polka Bridge, Polka Starter as coins that 
if you think the Polkadot ecosystem is going to go up, then these could be good ideas to take some positions in. But these are pretty risky. These can go to zero or these can go to do a 10x. And I want to bring up this coin really quick. Uh, Cover Protocol. I invested about, I don't know, $500, $700 in a year ago or so. They they went bankrupt. They're not bankrupt, but they, basically they stopped. This company went under. It says September 5th, Cover Protocol will be shut down following the sudden departure of the core developers. Oops. So, um, you know, my $700 is down quite a bit. You can see it's down 91% from its all-time high. So that can happen. Crypto is the Wild West. That can happen. I mean, unless you want to invest in Bitcoin and Ethereum and maybe some other, you know, solid projects that probably aren't going to do that, then, you know, you, you want, you're not going to have those risks, but you may not have the same gains as some of these smaller cap coins. So I want to finish the video talking about this amazing story from Roslyn Layton, basically saying, hey, SEC, either do your job, give real crypto clarity, or just stop because you're not helping anything. So I want to summarize this for you guys. So the SEC is saying they are giving regulatory clarity, but she calls it an increasingly maddening charade. Nothing is getting done. And they are providing anything but clarity for digital assets or distributed ledger tech. And she said this is another financial crisis. That's pretty bold. Financial crisis in the making. And this really comes about because of what's going on right now with Coinbase, which a lot of you guys know, Coinbase and the SEC are getting at it. So Coinbase said they approached the SEC for guidance on their lending product. And Brian Armstrong, the CEO, says that the SEC responded with subpoenas for records and depositions, demanded a list of all their clients who had expressed interest in the product, and finally issued Coinbase a Wells notice, which is a warning of impending enforcement action. But the problem is, is that the SEC isn't giving them any information about what's going on. He says they are refusing to offer any opinion in writing to the industry on what should be allowed and why, and instead are engaging in intimidation tactics behind closed doors. That's pretty bold to say that, to be honest. Picking winners and losers, right? They have been attacking Ripple for a long time. Well, the lawsuit came out December 2020, so about a year. But they're saying it's been an unregistered security since it was introduced in 2013. But the SEC didn't let them know that they were basically looking into it, thinking it was an unregistered security up until like a year ago or so. The SEC has been forced to admit in court that it never gave fair notice prior to the lawsuit to any market participant who sought guidance on XRP that it was a security. So not only did they not even tell them it was a security that they were kind of you know, looking at them, scrutinizing them, but they just all of a sudden decided to sue them. Whereas with Ethereum, Ethereum gets the pass, but Vitalik Buterin sold 500,000 Ether to a hedge fund manager investor, Mike Novogratz, who's very bullish on Bitcoin and Ethereum. And he and a lot of lawyers and lobbyists basically went to war for Ethereum and it was deemed not a security. Whereas Coinbase is getting attacked and obviously XRP is getting attacked. So will Congress do its job? Uh, she says the continued clarity charade is driving fintech investors or innovators abroad. People are leaving the United States because they don't know what the heck's going on here. And she ends the story saying the SEC is supposed to provide clear, unambiguous rules through a transparent process. Lack of clarity has created financial crises before, and it can happen again. So pretty bold what she's saying. Basically, you know, unless the SEC gets clear on what it's doing and why it's doing it and can provide clarity to companies, it could create another financial crisis. So that's pretty bold. Alrighty, guys, that's it for the video today. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, make sure to do so. And until next time, talk with you soon and bye for now.